All right, g'day and welcome back to the channel, guys. Been a little while. Uh, today I thought I'd just go for a wander around my local neighbourhood, get a couple of things, have a coffee, and pretty much have a chat about why I'm here in Vietnam. Um, just make the first stop for the day. Hello, I'm good, thanks. Excellent. Come on. Alright. First stop, a little cigarette dealer. Um, yes, before anyone says anything. I know they're bad for you. I shouldn't do it. And no, you shouldn't either. Anyway, onward. We'll go and get some breakfast. <laughs> Hello. Now what are you doing, man? Come on. I absolutely love these things. Nothing like a bun me. I probably pronounce it incorrectly. Well, learning Vietnamese is no easy task. I can tell you right now, being the uh, sounds of letters can be quite different and it's also tonal, so that can upset the other part, but it's not going to stop me from learning it and every day I learn new words. Some of them apparently not words you say in polite society as I found out. Uh, some friends of my fiance decided to teach me what I've since learned was a uh, swear word and had me bowing and greeting people with it. They thought it was pretty funny. I thought it was pretty hilarious myself. It was great. Um, so now every time I see this particular person, that's how I greet him and him alone. So there's no denying Vietnamese people have a great sense of humour. Now this is my local neighbourhood at the moment. I'm out in, and again, not always going to get the pronunciations right, but I'll do my best. Minh Tan. I'm about, no, about 10 kilometres from District 1, so it's a southern district of uh, Ho Chi Minh City. I'm out this way because my fiancé lives and works further out, so it's sort of like a nice middle ground. This district has some absolutely phenomenal restaurants and there's actually plenty to do uh, just across the road from where I was then and you could probably see it when I was walking down to the uh, first little stop I made is a rather large Aeon shopping mall. No different to any shopping mall you'll find anywhere in the world. Um, so it's just not all street side markets and in Vietnam you can Go there, there's pretty much every brand name, McDonald's, KFC. There's people that know me personally. I've over time been partial to a bit of the dirty bird. I must say that in Vietnam it's far better than uh, the product you get offered up in Australia, but it still carries that uh, overwhelming feeling of regret about 15 minutes after you eat it.
That said, there's um, on the top floor of that mall, it's basically the entire floor is restaurants, Korean barbecue, pizza, noodles, sushi. Pretty much if you can eat it, they've got it. I could probably um, start eating there and it'd take me a couple of months to actually eat at every last one of them. But you get that. Anyway, as I said, I just thought I'd take everyone for a little walk around the um, around the block, and we'll see what everything, where everything is. Uh, I'll find a coffee shop shortly to sit down at and eat my bun, me. Yeah, of course, you can't go wrong with bun leaf. Basically, those that don't know what they are, this is way. This version of it's basically just a little pork roll. It's got some carrot, cucumber. Um, this one doesn't have chilli because she knows I'm not exactly the, the biggest chilli fan in the world. If you're wondering why I'm walking on the road, well, you sort of get used to it over here because the footpath is, well, walking's not generally what it's used for. So you get used to just walking on the road. And the footpaths here generally used to park motorbikes, set up businesses, um, pretty much everything except pedestrians. So. You tend to get used to that. I'd stop at that coffee shop, but they've got some music playing, and I'd only end up getting the um, video with the copyrights right. Now, what you see here, I'll just pan around. They appear to be setting up probably for a wedding. Now they'll just set that up in the street, block off the street for the length of time the wedding's on. And um, once they're finished, pack it all up. No one cares, don't need any permits, you just do it. And honestly, sometimes things like that are so much better. I think in Australia and part of the Western world, things have become so regulated and they just stifle any kind of fun. I've seen quite a few of them in the local area at different times. You'll just suddenly see a marquee pop up. A couple of hours later, there'll be people sitting there eating, drinking as traffic goes by. It's just the done thing. Looks like I might have handled them. Uh. Of course, in Vietnam, coffee's huge. I actually did do some research on it, and Vietnam is the second, well, from the information I read, whether it's right or not, it's another thing. Vietnam's the second largest producer of coffee in the world. Now, most of the coffee you drink here, like what I drink, um, is a different bean to the Western one. They use the Robusta. Um, I like it. Rather than using just standard milk, they use condensed milk for the extra sweetness. Because the robusta bean is a stronger bean, the sweetness of the uh, condensed milk offsets the bitterness of the uh, coffee. And you end up with a really pleasant drink. Now, to give you an idea, this is the Aeon Mall across the road. Definitely sizable. 
and there's a hospital directly behind it. As then, we got Starbucks. I mean, the, the coffee in Vietnam is amazing. I don't know why anyone would want to drink Starbucks coffee, but each their own, and good luck to you if you like it. Now a little bit of why I'm in Vietnam, it's um, well it could be a long story but I'll shorten it to condense it down. I first visited Vietnam in 2018 and a couple of friends of mine came across for a month, uh, saw quite a lot, started in Hanoi, did Haolong Bay, Nimbin, Way. Da Nang, Hoi An, uh, Nha Trang, which I've pronounced wrong, I know it's pronounced differently that here, but uh, Da Lat, Ho Chi Minh City and Phu Poi, which is an island off the bottom. And again, that's a difficult one to pronounce and you do tend to learn over time these things. But that really started, I loved the place when I came then. And at the time I was a police officer in Australia. And I'd often joke that I could move to Vietnam quite easily. Over time, unfortunately, um, as a side effect of my job as a police officer, I ended up uh, suffering from PTSD and the nature of that it ultimately ended my career after a period of battling with it and trying to go back and whatnot. That subject and the uh, process of medically retiring from the police, well I could probably sit here and talk for about three hours about how utterly um, traumatising and frustrating that process is, so I won't bother. Anyway, as it happens, I came back to Vietnam late last year for another visit, basically the first opportunity after COVID shut down the world, and my desire to uh, spend a lot more time here. Went from a joke to a plan. And as it happens, I met a absolutely amazing woman, Pal, my fiance, soon to be wife. And well, the rest sort of history. It um, just makes sense and. Through that, I mean, now that I'm retired from the police and, well, the prospects of full-time work and whatnot, thanks to 15 years of trauma, uh, not overly likely. I had to make common sense decisions about not only my mental health, but my financial well-being. So Vietnam just kept stacking up more and more. And the cost of living here is quite a bit cheaper than Australia. Even when I say quite a bit cheaper, the studio apartment I rent at the moment costs me about 360 Australian dollars a month. Now in that price, that includes internet, and pay TV, um, motorbike parking, I pay electricity extra, the electricity is less than half the price of electricity in Australia. And I've got a nice pleasant place to stay and as I said, where I am, there is nothing within that I don't need within a couple of minutes walk. And that's one of the beautiful things. 
Ooh, I'm gonna trip that over. Um, so yes, yeah, food is very cheap. And to give you an idea, having just purchased a packet of cigarettes and a bun me and soon to pick up a coffee. Let's go through the breakdown of that now. Again, you shouldn't smoke. If you don't, don't take it up. But if you do, and this may upset a few people in Australia, given the absolutely ridiculous price of cigarettes in Australia. Um, that packet of cigarettes, 20 Marlboros, cost me $1.80. The equivalent in Australia is probably going to cost you about $36. Maybe more now, I don't know. My bun me roll, about 90 cents. And when I sit down for a coffee, uh, the price of that will be about a dollar fifty. So for the grand total of probably four dollars, and that's my morning. Now it's not saying you can't spend a lot of money over here. You certainly can. If you like drinking spirits. You like going to clubs and bars and that sort of stuff, but you're paying pretty expensive prices. But I mean, on average, the restaurants out here, I'm paying maybe between a dollar and a dollar fifty for a beer. That's a can of beer in a restaurant. Takeaway, carton of Saigon cans. You can pick them up for about oh, $15 for 24 cans. And you can buy it, buy beer anywhere. Literally anywhere. I'm just walking past the shop now and cartons of beer in the window. <coughs> anyway, it can be quite amazing where life takes you. As much as I joked about moving here and living here on a, you know, like spending the majority of my year here, I probably never actually thought it would come to fruition, but here I am. And on that, I mean, honestly, you've got to do what's right for you. I know there's a lot of people in my situation, hell, most of the people I work with have, um, medically retired from the police. Um, I know they know how traumatic the experience is and it's not something anyone wants, but there is life after it. And for those that are still in the job, if any actually watch this, never be afraid to ask for help. Believe me, I know at times I was and Really, you know, you got to look after yourself. Feel free to ask me any questions that you might have. I'm by no means an authority on Vietnam, but I have been here for quite some time. I've visited quite a few people, a few places, and I'm more than happy to provide you with what I know. Um, I think it's a wonderful country. The people here are incredibly friendly. And don't be worried about a language gap, yes. People here generally don't speak English or very little, but between Google Translate um, and pretty much sign language, you can get by. The tourist areas, there's definitely a lot more people that can speak English. And um, I think you'll find that it won't, won't be an issue for you. 
If you are visiting, I strongly suggest that you take the time to, at the very least, learn a few words in Vietnamese. I mean, just the, the basics. Thank you. Hello. Um, they appreciate it. And you'll probably have a better time. coming to, down my street now. Um, just some thoughts on Vietnam. It is a um, sort of raw tourist market. I mean, tourism is important to them, but it's not their main thing. Vietnam's always been rather a manufacturing powerhouse. That's always sort of been their focus and strength. As I said, don't get me wrong, tourism is important to them, but it's not the be all and end all. All right, coffee shop will do. Haven't been to this one before, so let's try it out. Whew. It's rather warm today. Um, should just set the tripod down out on the street so I mean let's face it anyone that's watched any of my videos before knows what it looked like and we all don't need to see that so you can just watch the world go by while I eat <laughs> Ooh. yes the one thing you never have to uh, worry about here in Vietnam is the weather. The uh, weather is pretty much the same every day as far as temperature wise, somewhere around the 30 to 33 degree mark. Uh, starting to come towards the end of the wet season now, so the chances of rain will start to lower dramatically. For a period there, it was pretty much raining every afternoon and I'm and in saying that, sometimes you just get a storm, last 15 minutes and then you have nothing else. Uh, Café Suda? Café Suda. Excellent, thank you. Uh, yeah, you'd have a 15 minute storm and then it'd be gone again. Um, in honest, all honesty, I'd, I'd had been told it was the worst time to visit Vietnam because of the, the weather, but Honestly, I found it to be the mildest of when I've been here, mainly due to the rain cooling the concrete down, especially in the city here. And it's, um, you know, even of a night I've been riding a motorbike home, 26 degrees, and honestly, at different times I felt like I could put a hoodie on or something just to stop the breeze, which is kind of ridiculous. But you do acclimatise. Um, yes, yeah, so. Vietnam is definitely, well, it's not hard to tell I love the place and I do want to visit a lot more nearby countries, South Korea, um, Taiwan, uh, I've been to Thailand, I'd like to explore more of Thailand. A couple of places that I've been there I didn't enjoy so much, some I did, but again I've only combined being there for eight days so it, you can't make a judgment on a place off such a short period of time um, it is very difficult for me to film especially if i'm traveling with my family here as you could imagine trying to do this with a, a near three-year-old is virtually impossible and not practical but i will travel to some destination solo so i can uh, document them and put them up for people to look at. I know there's a lot of lot of content creators out there and a lot of people doing similar things. As I said, I hope to get to areas that are 
probably less travelled, um, less visited, to show that there is a lot more to Vietnam than just the the main tourist attractions people think of when they come here. Um, I'll document a lot more of the food because, again, other than the, the main dishes with pa, bun mi, um, etc., there's a lot more variety in food here than you'd ever imagine. Come on. Thank you. Oh, that's the stuff. Yeah. Grab the camera and just... This is what it's all about. Sitting back, having a coffee and watching the world go by. Highly recommend. It's been a while since I had this set up out, the, the gimbal and Sony camera. Um, kind of thought I'd better get that out and justify the fact I spent that much money on it all, so. Filming over here is not an issue, and again, it's like anything. If you want to take pictures, use drones, no one tends to have an issue with it. If you go somewhere sensitive, somewhere you know religious, whatnot, you may well be able to film there. But do the sort of show some respect and ask. Um, you'd be surprised how often people are receptive when you show them a bit of respect. And that's generally how I operate. And again, even coming into places like this, I'll come in well before and ask them and say, is it okay if I film here? Are you happy with that? Rather than just showing up with a camera and poking it in people's faces. Um, but, yeah, it's great to document your travels, even if it's not to this level. So what does the future hold? Well, it's soon to be married, so that's, that's big. Um, I'm probably the happiest I've been in my life in that regard. Um, exciting time. Um, building a house and, as I said, enjoying a pretty peaceful and content life away from for me, the things that, that, that trigger me and my PTSD. I have very, very few triggers over here. Funnily enough, the airport is, and it's generally because of the way people get um, agitated and whatnot in airports, and I can understand that, but it, I find those experiences can turn into frustration and anger and it's not at the airport itself it's, it's just the way people behave it um, it's not something I experience out here in the in the suburbs of Vietnam so I can leave it lead a pretty mellow balanced life out here and again I think later this week I'm going to take a drive out towards my fiance's place um, most people have seen Vietnam traffic, as in riding around District 1 or other places. I'll hook up the GoPro to the bike and go for a, a local trip at rush hour. Um, it, it truly is something to, to witness. Um, and again, it's not something I feel unsafe doing by any means. You, you really do adapt to the um, way traffic works here and within a short amount of time. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, it, you, as long as you don't drive in an aggressive manner, um, you're alert and basically in the inverse, don't drive in a passive manner, you have no issue riding a bike here. In fact, the only thing that terrifies me is uh, my fiance suggesting that when I get my license converted over properly, that I drive a car. Now that does terrify me because driving a car over here from everything I've seen is no joke. You've got 
10,000 scooters and cars and trucks and like a bike you can whip around and navigate but a car holy crap but we'll cross that bridge when I come to it um, <laughs> so anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video I mean it's only a sort of brief walk around and a little bit of scenery but I guess you probably learnt more than you need to about me and hopefully you've learned a little bit about Vietnam and I really do hope anyone that's wanting to come here or just wants to learn a little bit more about Vietnam that you ask away in the comments. As I said, I'm, I'm not an authority but you know, I do have some insights and I can speak from my experiences and um, I'm more than happy to help anyone out with ideas for visits here or, or yeah, and I'm quite happy to come and have a beer if you visit probably more than one but that's another story for another day as well um, as I said I hope you've enjoyed the video I, I actually enjoy making these They're, they are a therapy and they do put me out of my comfort zone I mean it doing this sort of stuff so it, it really is sort of a, I guess good therapy but um, as I said, I hope people get some kind of enjoyment or find them informative. And I hope to make many more in the future and see where we go from there. But if you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel and um, I'll uh, provide some more videos in the very near future. Probably, hopefully, more than once every two months. But sometimes that can be a bit... It's been a bit busy of late, but no promises, but I hope to update more often and quite regularly. All right, guys, uh, catch you in the next one, and wherever you are, have a great day and enjoy life. Bye.